ladies and gents, this is my Windsor all-time best 11 players. And I've done this slightly differently in that this might not be the best ever 11 grips that I played with. I haven't played a lot of cricket in the uh, lower grades. I've gone for players that I've played a lot of cricket with. So it's going to be a bit of a mixed bag, so bear with me. Uh, opening up is one gentleman by the name of Steve Ward. He was a very, very good batsman um, in terms of his ability. Always got it off to a very good start at the top of the innings. I think for the four or five seasons that I played with him, he got between four or five hundred runs every year. Always got a ton, numerous 50s within there as well. Um, and also did this incredibly weird thing with his lips where he ended up coming off the pitch looking like he triple dropped ecstasy at a club in Ibiza. And his lips were red raw where he just used to chew the hell out of them. Must be some weird Antipodean thing, I'm not quite sure, but you know, his uh, ability with the willow gets him in at number one. Uh, he is going to be ably supported uh, by a guy called Abby Ashraf coming in at two. Um, Abby, again, was a very talented cricketer, actually. Um, he didn't say a lot. In fact, you could probably best describe him as a bit of a mute. Um, but I remember playing in a team where I think he got sort of seven or eight consecutive 50s, which I believe is still a club batting record. Um, did incredibly well, could bowl a little bit as well, and was incredible in the field, actually. A very underrated fielder. Um, he's also the source of one of my favourite Windsor CC stories. Um, having sat down with him during the innings, just having a bit of a chat to him, trying to get him to open up and say a bit. He said, you know, Abby, what are you doing at uni? He was one of these guys as well that was at uni for 15 years so that they could pay half price subs. But anyway, we were asking questions around, you know, what are you doing? And he was telling us a little bit about, you know, his degree and kind of one and two word answers. Uh, and, you know, I moved on. So what do you want to do, you know, when you, when you graduate? I want to be a terrorist. Now, he was, of course, joking, um, but I've never actually seen an entire team offer to umpire so quickly at one given point in time. Uh, a very funny moment from a man that never said any words whatsoever. Um, coming in at number three uh, is a guy I've got a lot of time for. Um, yeah, he's, uh, let's just say, he's developed uh, both as a cricketer and also horizontally. Number three is Sam Jordan. Uh, I've played a lot of cricket with SJ. Uh, really, really lovely guy. Uh, very happy with the gloves on, standing at first slip, grazing and sledging. Uh, but he's mainly in for his ability with the bat. Uh, I think we all know, you know, what a guy that can really change the course of an innings very, very quickly. Uh, and I've played a couple of seasons with him in the second 11 where he was absolutely on fire and uh, guaranteed us a lot of runs. And as I said, just changed the whole momentum of a game. So very, very justifiably in at number three. Um, number four uh, is somebody that's going to be in every person's team, I believe. Uh, the legend that is Wes Nichols. Uh, now, I unfortunately didn't get to play much cricket with Wes. Uh, as I said, you know, he was captain of the ones. I played a lot of lower grade cricket. Um, but I did probably play sort of six, seven, eight games with him. Um, but, you know, he was a very, very good friend of mine. Spent a lot of time um, with him off the field, just talking cricket, amongst other things. And uh, there isn't much to say that hasn't already been said about Wes. Um, comfortably the best player that I've seen at Windsor Cricket Club. Uh, a very, very good friend of mine, sorely missed, um, but quite rightly deserves his place in the team. And he's also my captain as well. Number five is uh, uh, an interesting choice. A guy, again, um, who is a lovely bloke. Uh, it is Mohammed Alam, a.k.a. the Crazy Frog. And, uh, yeah, this guy, again, is in for a variety of reasons. Um, what a genuinely happy bloke. Um, you don't see many people that are just pretty high on life. Uh, and this guy is one of those people, uh, always smiling, always having fun, uh, was great to have in the field, um, but an incredibly good batsman as well. Um, he could be absolutely superb or absolutely rubbish. Um, but I've picked him in there because again, I've seen him score bundles of runs, change games for us as well uh, and on his day can be a match winner and another couple of stories about this fella 
I remember being in a, an, I think we had an Inter Club 2020, and uh, this pretty much sums up how dumb this kid is. But uh, it was Wes's idea, actually. We had eight cows, and I think we brought on Paul to uh, toss one up, and of course, Alan couldn't refuse, could he? And uh, absolutely chucked it down uh, cow's throat. I think it was Charles Light that took the catch, actually. So that summed him up. Um, and also him being on tour, the Northern Tour, which was one of the most alcoholic weeks I've ever had. This fella doesn't drink. Uh, spent the entire week with us, absolutely gold dust. Uh, probably drank about 20 litres of Red Bull and smoked about 2,000 cigarettes. And when asked what his feedback on, on the tour would be, he was, uh, never come again. Um, but yeah, loved playing cricket with him. It's, uh, it's a shame he's still not with us at the club. Um, now, one, two, three, four, five. Number six uh, is a very good friend of mine, someone I've known for a very, very long time. We go way back. Is uh, the big huggy bear, Mark Huggins. Uh, again, you know, what an incredible batsman. I played cricket with him at school when he was an exceptional bowler. Has always been one of the most talented cricketers that I've known in our age group uh, and going on. Uh, went and played a little bit higher, but you know, came back to his roots that were uh, Windsor CC. And again, you know, what a guy, great batsman, uh, bucket hands at first slip as well. So as a bowler, he's the kind of person you want standing there to uh, to help you out. And so he comfortably gets in my side. Uh, followed up with a, a guy that I just very simply refer to as the legend, a guy called Scott Martin. Um, this gentleman again was uh, in my mind should have played much higher at Windsor, but was very comfortable playing in the lower grades as he got older, wanted to be in that team so he could play with his boy as he got a bit older as well. But um, I just got such, such a, a huge amount of depth in terms of my learning at cricket. Um, <laughs> some of you are probably laughing at that and going, yeah, well done, Scott. Uh, but no, seriously, on a cricketing perspective, um, the guy had an incredible amount of knowledge about the game, was very happy to sit down and talk and share um, his interpretation of things. And uh, as I was uh, uh, coming into the team, uh, in my sort of late teens, early 20s, he was a real big help for me in terms of just understanding the game and what we were doing and things. So, again, great batsman, great bowler. Uh, my everlasting memory of him, I think, is when uh, he was going to average 100 for the season um, and <laughs> ended up uh, not doing that because he got bowled second ball by a 14-year-old one year, I think. So, never mind, mate, but you've got a lot of records. Um, coming in at eight... Again, another guy that uh, I'm very proud to call uh, an incredibly good friend of mine. Uh, he will be my wicket keeper, and it's uh, Wayne Lloyd, uh, the honey badger. Um, I think Edgy uh, summed it up for me when he did his 11 and said that this guy was one of the most underrated cricketers, and I think that is absolutely the case, particularly with the gloves. Uh, and again, you know, I spent a lot of time with him in the twos, threes, and fours. Uh, he kept, he was also a very good pinch hitting batsman. I think we've all seen the video uh, filmed on a Friday night where his words of encouragement to the bowler were to uh, bowl a better ball, bruv. Um, but yeah, that summed up his uh, carefree attitude to cricket. He went in and uh, just did his business, got on with it very quietly, but again, was a very talented uh, individual and another one sorely missed. But uh, mate, you are definitely in my side. Uh, number nine, we're into... We've gone through a lot of all-rounders. We're definitely into genuine bowlers now. Um, so uh, number nine is a guy that I opened the bowling with in the twos for two, three seasons. Uh, Michael Chambers. Um, again, really pleased to see uh, Chambers or the bungalow uh, progressing on and moving into the ones and now taking wickets. Really pleased to see that. Uh, very good bowler. Um, again, uh, really enjoyed opening the bowling with him. Took a lot of wickets together. Uh, got promotion, which was great. Um, and again, one of the things he said to me, I remember, I think he'd got four wickets, I'd got four, and uh, they were all bold because catches were being dropped. And Michael just came up to me completely blasé and just said, Louis, should we just start our own team? And that pretty much summed him up. I've got to be honest, I wasn't sure if he was being serious or not, because he probably does think you can play cricket with two. Um, but anyway, nice gesture, uh, lovely lad. And again, as I said, really glad to see him progressing on at the club and, uh, and going on to do good things in the ones. Um, Number 10, um, <laughs> there are two noises, I think, that are synonymous with Windsor Cricket Club. Uh, the first would be Paul, audio nickname, the uh, 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 created by Mr. Oliver Birch. Uh, 
The second is the voice of this guy at number 10, and you've guessed it, that is Dean Bean. Um, now, if Alan was high on life, oh, I don't know how you describe this fella, um, just a genuinely nice guy, uh, always happy, um, always willing to chat and speak, um, you know, just have got a great outlook on life, and he extends that onto the cricket pitch and the way that he joins in with all the guys and the camaraderie. Um, he will probably be the scourge of uh, every village and hamlet that we played in in the Thames Valley, shouting about this fictitious blooming train. I mean, who knows what goes on inside his head? But uh, again, open the bowl of this guy for uh, uh, many, many games, across very a lot of seasons. Uh, great bowler. Um, I was going to say underrated, but I don't think that is because I think he is very much respected by a lot of the guys at the club. Um, bowls very consistent line and length, and he's you know he's in his forties, right? Absolute testimony to the young guys to just look after yourself, keep going, and uh, and really go on and progress. So yeah, absolutely love playing with uh, with Dean Bean, and um, yeah, gets in at number ten. Um, I didn't really think about this because Mallard's probably going to kill me now, but he is my number eleven, and I put him in behind Dean. So sorry about that, mate. Um, but uh, Potato is my number eleven. Um, incredibly good cricketer. Uh, leg spin is probably one of the hardest arts. Uh, that you can do from a bowling perspective anyway. Uh, and this guy was one of the best that I've seen at it anyway. Took tons of wickets for us. Uh, was always there, very committed club guy as well, both on and off the pitch. Um, was really good at getting things done, geeing the guys up, making sure we're all there and doing our admin and everything. Uh, but most of all, as I said, an incredibly good bowler. And uh, yeah, took lots and lots of wickets. And again, was instrumental in us getting promoted that year. Um, he's also uh, somebody that I used to use when I was captaining. I would go to Chris and say, oh, you know, look, something's not right. Um, that guy's not doing something. Or, you know, make a complaint about the umpire or one of the oppo. And he's such a nose as well that he'd go, oh, excuse me, that's wrong. No, you, that's against the rules. So he was quite useful in that respect as well. I used to get him to do all of our dirty work. So uh, thanks for that, Mallard. Um, you are definitely sorely missed. Uh, but I hope you're doing well down in Wales. Um, and that... Ladies and gents, is my 11. Thank you very much.